Hello and welcome to the second part of my video series about how Musikraken works. This time I'm going to talk about the keyboard module. By default, the keyboard in Musikraken looks like a real physical keyboard. It has white and black keys and the same layout. There are of course a few differences. If you look at a real keyboard, there is some physical information where the keys are. And there is also some resistance when you press the keys and this is all missing in the keyboard Musikraken. So it's not really a replacement for a real physical keyboard. It's more an extension to it because there are a few things you can do on a touch screen that you cannot do on a physical keyboard. Mobile devices and tablets today have a complex multi-touch screen that can be used to slide on it or uh, that tracks each finger separately and also tracks the touch pressure or radius in some cases. And I'm trying to use everything I can in Musikraken so you can do whatever you want. As always in Musikraken, here is the play screen and this is the editing screen. So you can see here I have created a keyboard module and I've connected it with a virtual cable to a MIDI output module. And I selected IDEM MIDI host here, which is the connection via USB to a Mac. This is the fastest way to send MIDI events to a Mac. Here you can see the different ports that the keyboard module has. Uh, it has output ports for sliding and touch radius. Some devices have touch pressure ports here. Also has two input ports. I will explain these later. On the main screen you can interact with the keyboard, you can play notes. Or you can slide here to change the octave you want to play on. You can deactivate the sliding on top here. You can also make this smaller by restricting it to one side. You can change which side it should be on here. Or top or down the same. And this allows you to use two keyboards or another control simultaneously. So for example, I can create a second keyboard. Maybe connect it here as well. And then this one is on top, this is on the bottom. And for example, this will play the low octave and this the high octave, or this will play a completely different instrument. You can really combine everything here to make your own setup. These ports can be used to control other aspects while playing on the keyboard. For example, I can change the modulation while sliding on the key. If I, for example, connect here the green output port with an orange input port, it will automatically create a value to MIDI converter. And here I can change whatever should happen with the value. Should it be converted to modulation or any of the other control change events? Or should it be converted to a note? I could play a note and play another note while sliding, which usually doesn't make much sense, but you can. Um, you can control channel pressure or pitch bend while sliding. So now that I've connected them, I can play on the keyboard and slide and control the modulation, the dynamics in this case, of the instrument. And I don't need a second hand to control the mod wheel. I can do everything with one hand if I want to. This also works with chords. This was the wire slide, so it's up and down. I can also control it sideways if I want to. I can just connect these here and it's the same, just the other direction. It usually makes more sense up and down. The sideways is often used to control pitch bends, uh, but it can be used for whatever you want. Some devices have a pressure output port. Uh, because they support touch pressure. The newer iOS devices don't support touch pressure anymore. And on Android you have to try out, I just display all the ports and you have to connect them. Because it depends on the manufacturer if he has implemented it or not and it's sometimes a bit fishy, so just try it out. So as a replacement for the touch pressure I also track radius here. This also really depends on the device you're using, how well this is implemented. Um, as you can see here, I can flatten my finger on the screen to make the radius larger and this way I can control the output value. And 
you can also see that it jumps a bit. On iOS, this only has like five to six values difference from zero to one, so it jumps a bit. On Android, it depends on the device. For example, my Samsung tablet has smooth scaling for touch radius, but it really depends. Some have no scaling at all or just one value. Let's look at some of the options that I have. Here I can change the name of the keyboard. So what this does is it displays the name here. So if I have multiple keyboards, I can create a different name and I also can detect which one is here to make it easier to create a nice setup. Then here I can control the key size. For example, if you make this larger, all the keys will be very wide. It depends on the keyboard layout if it makes the key wider or higher. You can also make all the keys smaller. So you can really adjust the key size to your fingers. It also depends on the device you're using. On the mobile phone it can be very small, so it really depends what you want to do. Here I can control the channel that the MIDI event is sent out. Uh, there are other ways to control that. You can, for example, create um, effects uh, channel switcher and then connect this here instead and route the MIDI events to another channel. But if you just want to have a simple setup and want to change the MIDI channel here, just change it. Then maybe I should show the keyboard layout type first. Um, so far I've used the normal keyboard layout, but I can change it. Currently there are three different keyboard layout types. Uh, there will probably be more. One of them is the side by side, which makes all the keys, the black and white keys, the same size, which makes it easier to slide on them and control other things. It also has an advantage that I can remove unneeded keys completely, uh, as we will see later. Then there is the grid layout. The grid layout has all the octaves on top of each other, so you can easily switch the octave here. You can also create some kind of uh, cat runs over the keyboard sound easily like this. But there are also more useful cases uh, to use this layout. So let's switch back to the side by side. Now I will show the velocity input source. On the real keyboard, the velocity is defined by how hard I hit the keys. I can simulate this somewhat in music rocking, but it depends on device and also what you want to do with it. It's different, so I have multiple options of how this velocity is defined. First one is fixed, so it's just a value that you can set here, so you can hear all the velocities are the same. Uh, one option to simulate a real physical keyboard is to use the accelerometer of the device. This measures how much the device shakes when I hit the screen and then uses this to compute the velocity for each key. This adds a small delay to the note events because the accelerometer reacts later after I hit the screen and otherwise without the delay I wouldn't get nice results. Then I can also create velocity based on the y-axis up down. Um, here it's small velocity and higher up there are the higher velocity values. This gives you more control over the velocity and you can also have different velocity on different keys. Then there is the opposite, the y-axis inverted. In this case the higher velocities are down here, and the lower ones up here. This also works in different layouts. For example, the grid layout is the same. Uh, here are high values and up here lower values. Then 
Then there is also the option to use the velocity port. Uh, in this case, here you can see there is an input port called velocity and I can connect whatever I want to this and use it to generate velocity from it. So for example, I could use um, hand tracking. Then up down, now you can see if my hand is on the bottom of the screen, then there are small velocities and higher velocities I go up. Or I can use motion sensors for this. So if I connect here, I can set the range of the input value here. So now I can rotate the device. and control the velocity like this. I can connect whatever I want to this input port. Then there is the option to change key while sliding. By default, if I slide on the keyboard, it doesn't change anything, it doesn't change the note because I can use sliding for other things. But I can also activate this here and now I can change it. Then here are the sensitivity settings for both directions. How far do I have to slide to go from zero to the full value? Then there's the setting to reset the values when I release the keys. Uh, this is especially useful when using pitch bend, but it can also be useful for other values. So for example here I've connected the sideways sliding and create pitch bend. And without this setting you can see By default, it keeps the pitch bend that was sent previously. So I cannot play the normal note anymore. But I can change this here and say reset the value. And now it resets the pitch bend value when I release it. So. There is also an option to send after touch events when I'm sliding up and down on the keys. This might change in the future because I'm currently working on per note events, but you can already activate it and use it. Then we have highlight scale. If you activate this, you see there is a scale that you can select and there are a lot of them. So let's start with major, uh, C major. Now you can see that every key that's in C major is highlighted. The root note is red on top and the other ones are yellow. And I can still play all the notes, but I can change this if I want. I can also deactivate non-scale notes. And in this case, it will only show the keys that are in C major. And this only works in the side-by-side -side and grid mode. In normal mode, it also deactivates the notes, but it still shows them because otherwise the layout would look crappy and wouldn't work anymore. In grid mode, when I hide the non-scale notes, then it won't highlight it anymore because the root note is always here. Uh, for example, if I change it to another root note, it will still show up here. This way I can play around and try out different scales. So for example, let's use Hungarian Gypsy and then I can only play Hungarian Gypsy notes. There is also a setting to use the global scale. What this means is if I have two keyboards or for example a chord pad and a keyboard, um, this will use the same global scale. But if I want to use a different scale, these two I can say like I don't want to use global scale and can set a different one. So this one is still using the global scale and this one isn't. What this also does, if I change the global scale here, it will change it for all the modules that use global scale. So I can synchronize this say minor and then it's minor for both. 
You can also enable MPE, uh, MIDI polyphonic expression, on the keyboard. MPE sends the different note events on different channels, so the instrument that you're using needs to support MPE, otherwise it won't work. But if it does, you can send different pitch bend events or different control change events, another value, per note. So for example, I can control pitch bend separately. This is only possible with MPE and will be possible with MIDI 2 as well. Otherwise, we'll send one pitch bend event per full keyboard. There is the option to send MP configuration. I've disabled it by default because some instruments do not really react to this correctly and crash. But what this does, it sends the configuration of the pitch bend range to the instrument and then it knows, okay, you're using this pitch bend range. Then you can disable pitch bend. So if I disable it, no pitch bend possible anymore. Then here is a special mode, uh, I call it the channel per touch mode, I probably should name it differently. Um, some instruments allow you to put two fingers on the same key. Here I'm using Noise Melody by Rolly and this is one of the only instruments that I know that supports this. So if it's supported I can do it. I can put both fingers on the same key and still slide around. But most MP instruments do not support this, so I would, by default, turn it off. Otherwise, there will be chaos. Then you can also define if the finger radius, pressure, or the y-axis value sliding will control these two parameters. You can also turn them off by setting them to none. And then there's the pitch bend range which has to be the same value as the instrument has. If it's the same value, you can pitch bend to the exact notes, for example. If it's not the same value, it will be off, uh, will be different pitch here. If you disable MPE, you can also activate the mono pitch bend. And what this does, it uses the same pitch bending on the key uh, to the correct uh, pitch bend range on non-MPE instruments. Normal non-MPE instruments often have a pitch bend range that's much smaller. For example, two is often two semitones, but this depends on the instrument. You can change this. The range in this case is much smaller, but you can use this with any instrument that supports pitch bend. It doesn't have to be MPE. Then there's also the option to reset pitch bend on key release. What this does is if I use mono pitch bend or MPE pitch bending, if I release the key, it will send an event again to set the pitch bend back to zero. Then there is the latch mode. There is a separate latch module in Music Larkin, but this won't let you visualize which one of the keys is down. And if you set it on the keyboard, you will see here which keys are down. And by using the latch mode directly on the keyboard, I can also combine this with MPE, so I can... So I can keep the MPE values when I release the keys and deactivate them again by touching the key again. So this was a quick overview of what can be done with the keyboard module alone in Music Larkin, but of course the real fun starts when you start combining them with all the other input, output and effects modules. So I hope you're having fun with the app and are finding a lot of useful and fun combinations to use it. Thanks!